So will some people take advantage of things and say they have time blindness so they don't have to be at work on time? Yes, but you always, like people do that now anyways. Like without the excuse of time blindness, which is a real phenomenon in people, like people still do that now. They make excuses for being late to work. So adding one more quote unquote excuse for the scammers doesn't bother me when it could help like real people. Depending on the focus of your business, why are we even hiring women? Why are we hiring women who get periods and become cranky for a week? Why are we even hiring anybody who's fat, too slow to walk, can't breathe, needs to pee? Why are we even hiring humans in the first place? If we want no accommodations for humans, things that are natural to a human, we should just hire robots. I just think it's funny that we don't pretend like we already make accommodations for people. Oh, what about people who think they should get accommodations because they have kids? Gross, maybe you shouldn't have had them. Gross, I can't believe people want accommodations for surgeries. Oh, you got your surgery, you had cancer? Oh, you need time off work? No. <laughs> oh my God, I'm gonna get clipped, don't clip me. I'm just saying we pick and choose. Okay. I, I love that her username is Chaotic Philosopher. That just like, right when I saw that, I was like, girl, I gotta, I gotta react to this. It's so funny being on TikTok because there's so many things that don't ever reach YouTube, though this story did. Uh, do you guys know, oh, what's her name? The girl who's like, my opinions might offend you, though that's not her username anymore. She actually reacted to this video as well. So some people on YouTube are catching it. Um, I caught it, it was just on my feed because I'm part of like neurodivergent ADHD, like autism TikTok. <laughs> So, so this came up on my feed, you know? Okay, let's go ahead and watch it together. So I just got yelled at for asking a very reasonable question. So I'm applying to go somewhere and I just wanted to know, are there accommodations for people who struggle with time blindness and being on time, you know? And then the person I was with interrupted and acted like I was asking something else. And then when we were done, they actually started yelling at me and saying that accommodations for time blindness doesn't exist. And if you struggle with being on time, you'll never be able to get a job you know, provided you're trying your absolute best to be there. And then they're like, your stupid generation wants to destroy the workplace. And yeah, I think that a culture where workers are just cut off because they struggle with being on time, when there's other solutions that we can look to, I think that just anybody who thinks it's okay to just treat people like that, yeah, that culture needs to be dismantled. And then I asked that person, how can you feel good about yourself upholding this kind of system? And then to think, I'm entitled. No, if people think it's okay to treat others like this, uh, that's entitlement. So I just got yelled at for asking a very reasonable. Okay. Initial thoughts. Initial thoughts. Because I'm going to be real with you. Um, I have a lot. I have a lot of thoughts. Uh, let me tell you. I have a lot of thoughts. <laughs> oh, my God. This is so interesting to me. Again, I'm, can I just tell you this? I must have lived a thousand lives or I've just known so many different people, but I actually know what time blindness accommodations might look like because I know people in my life who have ADHD or severe like time management issues who have asked for accommodations in their jobs. So... I actually fully kind of am on board with her idea, but I do think because I look at her other videos and I looked at her other stuff, I also dislike her energy. <laughs> so there's two things that are going wrong here. One, her energy is just unlikable, period. The person who was yelling at her was her mom. She, I think, initially wanted to stay private in relation to who was yelling at her, but it was her mom. Which I think the mom has a right to feel like, oh my god, I've raised an, a useless human. Because in some ways, the mom did raise this person, and this person has a lot of entitlement energy. And at the same time, <clears throat> the mom might be ill-equipped to deal with a neurodivergent child. And then on the other hand, I don't know if she's actually diagnosed with anything. So this is like what's interesting, right? Because when you're working, you're an employee of a company, depending on what country you're in, and you want to make money for that company. And that company shouldn't care about you or your health or your anything, they should care about making money. So they should only hire the most efficient employees. On the other hand, maybe companies should be considered of their employees. It's funny that we want workers' representation and workers' rights, but then we get upset at people asking for accommodations for disabilities. Now, in my opinion, 
because time blindness isn't necessarily something you would find as a real condition, but it is something that a lot of people identify with. There's a lot of things on the internet about it. I've seen it in my own life. It is something that I think is quite real in people. I've seen people literally space, have no concept of time, and it is related to like how their brain works. So would I want to, in an ideal world, have a world that people could accommodate those types of people and we could find jobs for those kinds of people? Yes. And then we could find maybe different jobs for different kinds of people. Kind of like playing to your own strength. But ultimately, we don't live in that world. What was interesting was how many neurodivergent people felt a need to kind of like pick me about it, where they were like, um, I just set 20 alarms. Cool, dude. Awesome. Love it. Good thing. I'm glad you've learned to have a better relationship with your neurodivergency. And I'm glad that you have managed to like overcome a lot of things. That's so dope. I love that. Me too. Same thing, right? But again, when we're talking about what society needs or wants versus what is reality for a lot of individuals, it's a little bit more nuanced, I think. There are layers to this, you know? Do we want a society that works together with its community or do we want a community that's always in competition with one another? Do we want a little bit of both? So for me, as an example, um, I have problems and I just kind of put up with them, right? That's like my whole thing. Put up with it, suck it up, get work done. It's really stressful. It's really hard. But it is one of those things where I think you should just manage to make life work for you because work won't work for you. Life won't work for you. Society won't work for you. There is no village. There's only a village in the sense that people are good neighbors. People are nice enough. People try not to run red lights. But ultimately, this is what I mean to say, right? If we're not going to have a community that supports one another, including those with disabilities, including those with a little bit of a difficult time, then it is, you know, survival of the fittest. And if that's the case, then I don't care about being, I don't, I don't care about, you know how, okay, I'll say it this way. You know how people will say like, uh, fuck capitalism, fuck these big companies. I don't care if I steal from them. And then people are like, how are these companies going to care for the workers if you keep stealing from them? Well, how are the workers going to care about the companies if they don't accommodate them? Well, how are we going to accommodate them if they're not good workers? Well, how are we? I get it. It's a like catch-22. We can't have this like perfect, perfect society that works for everybody. But the question I again pose is what kind of society do we want? I would like one that knew how to accommodate for people with real-time blindness. That sounds awesome because I know those people who genuinely have the most unique relationship with their brains and they do need some accommodation. And at the same time, they're not exactly going to be high earners. They're not exactly going to be the people who go above and beyond, but they are still going to be probably good employees. They're probably going to be more than capable. What if you have an amazing skill, but you're a little bit unique, like on Love on the Spectrum, there's a, a guy there um, who's so unique, who's so lovely, and Sabode, and he's really good in math and he has a job, but he needs to live with his sister. He has kind of his parents and his family are making accommodations for him. And then he kind of works around works work. And I assume work also makes accommodations for him to some extent because he's such a good worker. But to say that they're not making accommodations is interesting to me because usually people who know you have something unique, they give you leeway. Companies who know you're pregnant and are going to be late, they give you leeway sometimes. Companies that know you just had a doctor's appointment and they give you a little bit of an accommodation that's them being open to your situation being different than other people's. I know I worked in grocery and sometimes people would call in and say, hey, I'm having problems at home right now. And we'd be like, that's cool. Come 10 minutes late, but come to work. Is this not better than just assuming she wants entitlement? And at the same time, like, you know, okay, so Lakara over here, love you, says, what the heck is time blindness? I knew what this was because I have neurodivergence in my life that seriously suffer from it. But it's interesting that some people have no idea what it is. And that's what I'm saying when I say bubbles and I'm saying like, look how I see this girl. And I'm like, yeah, she's kind of like entitled, but at the same time, she's not. And at the same time, same time, like, it's just a thing. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's a, some people suffer with things that are not expected of you or don't, are not easily explained to you. Or you think, well, I have this and I don't act this way, or I do this. It's just like a misunderstanding of how unique and different we're all existing in the world. And again, I've looked at this particular content creator's other content, and she has a lot of naive ideas about the world. But 
time blindness like is a real phenomenon that I see in people and they're not doing it on purpose. They're not actually trying to be late. They're not actually trying to neglect you. They're not actually trying to be rude. It's like they lose track of time in such a significant way that I don't know that I would even allow them to take care of a child. And like there's something to be said about that because like would they remember to feed the kid? Like would they remember? So again, when we're having these conversations, we're really saying like, is it a unique situation where someone's actually struggling with something? Or do we just feel like we're being taken advantage of? So many people thought she was making it up to take advantage of people. But can we not tell this girl's obviously not neurotypical? Like, look at her. She's got homeschooler face all over her. Like, she's obviously not normal in the sense that, like, she's not, like, going to function in the same way at a nine to five like everyone else. Right? The car says, oh, so it's the people who always are late to stuff. Sounds like an excuse. LOL. That's the thing. That's what is so interesting about the world. I think we're just afraid we're being duped. I think we're just afraid we're being taken advantage of. But neurotypicals be taken advantage of you guys all the time. People are taking advantage of you all the time and they don't have problems. Like I was at Disneyland and I found out that at Disneyland, you do not need to prove that you need to be in a wheelchair or need to cut line. So, hey, FYI, for all the scammers out there, if you want to cut the lines at Disneyland, all you have to do is say you need a wheelchair accommodation and they'll give it to you without proof. And you can cut all the lines at Disneyland, right? Now, to me, it's unethical and really shitty to pretend you have an illness to cut lines at Disneyland. But will people do that? Yes. Do I still think we should accommodate people who need help at Disneyland? Yes. So will some people take advantage of things and say they have time blindness so they don't have to be at work on time? Yes. But you always like people do that now anyways, like without the excuse of time blindness, which is a real phenomenon in people like people still do that now. They make excuses for being late to work. So adding one more quote unquote excuse for the scammers doesn't bother me when it could help like real people. I would love to run a business that was more self-aware about people's nuances and differences and how they could be doing something that kind of worked with their uniqueness, if you will. You know what I mean? So for me, when I see time blindness girl, I'm definitely not seeing somebody I need to hate. I'm just seeing somebody who's like, yeah, obviously she's got a problem and she's aware of the problem and she's not trying to say, I want to take advantage of anything. She's just trying to ask, is it a thing or should I not sign up for this particular thing? She clarified in a second video just saying like, yeah, if I don't qualify, then I don't qualify. But I would at least like to ask so I don't fake my way into a job, which most of you do. Most people fake their way into jobs and then show up late, show up tired, show, show up unable. She's ahead of time at least saying, do I even qualify? Right? So again, you can be angry at her and you can make it sound like it's entitlement. But aren't we just mad at the scammers who have, in, who have in, like scammed us? Are we really mad about the unique individuals who actually have problems? And isn't it funny that society is so blind to people who actually need some sort of help and that we've been, what, duped and scammed so much where, like, we refuse to give any leniency? And at the same time, like, she's naive and she's silly and she's got a lot of ideas that I think really need to be worked on. For sure. But time blindness seems to be a thing for people. I don't, that's why I don't hold people to my standards. People will ask me that sometimes, like, why, why don't you hold people to your standard? Why? So you all can fail miserably? You can't do what I can do, and I can't do what you can do. I can't do what – half of the time when I see certain YouTubers, I'm like, fuck, I wish I was like that. I can't do it. Even doing this stream this week, y'all know how proud I am of myself right now? Do you know how proud I am to just stream twice a week because I gathered enough spoons? I even told my partner this morning, babe. There's the possibility I might have enough spoons to stream tonight. And if I have enough spoons, I'm streaming. And he's like, whoa. And I was like, I know. Look at me. Streaming twice a week. That's a big deal. But for everyone else and for people who are chronic streamers, for people who are an amazing daily streamer, they're like, yeah, what's the big deal? I do this daily. That's amazing. I wish I could do this daily, but I literally want to die because I'm so out of spoons. I have to think. I have to plan. But I know it sounds so silly. Like, I'm just complaining. Oh, my God. All Brittany has to do is go live. I wish it was that simple. You know what I mean? So, like, props to all those daily streamers because, honestly, y'all kill it. And I wish I had it in me. But I don't. This is as good as it gets. Once in a while, having the spoons to do two streams. You know what I mean? So, it is one of those things where I'm just so aware of... How to other people, it just looks like I'm being lazy and I'm not doing anything. But to me, I'm just so aware of like how hard it was to even get here. 
that I can't expect the world to care about my problems. And I don't. I don't expect you guys to care, right? You can barely care about your own problems, right? But I do want to be a little bit of a voice for people who who maybe are like, hey, am I alone in this? Nah. You just got to still be an individual. Fuck the village because they fucked you anyways. And figure out how to make it work for yourself. Even when the whole world is telling you, like, your shit is bullshit. As long as you're genuinely trying and becoming a better person, fuck with them. Like, fuck them. They were never going to be there for you anyways. You know what I mean? So you can do it. You can figure your time, like, your time out. You can figure out your schedule. You can figure out how to go to work. You might not be, like, a tip-top CEO. But you definitely can be the best in what you can be the best in. You know? Mm. Kay says, I don't think there's reasonable accommodation for it. I think the point of accommodation is showing grace. Like if you're late once in a while, well, your boss will show more grace because they know. Well, I think the thing is, is that I imagine that instead of thinking she should get an accommodation at every job, we should try to figure out what jobs could give an accommodation, right? Like I'm thinking of jobs where maybe like you're a YouTube editor. And you need to get it done within 24 hours, but it can get done within any of the 24 hours. That's like cut time accommodation, right? That's saying, hey, if you can work within a 24-hour span of time, that's giving you 24 hours to figure out when to do it, right? Or um, if you're doing some sort of like filing work, okay, this needs to be filed within three days. So you don't need to be on time to file paperwork. You just need to get it done within three days. Or... There are jobs out there that could just work for your disability or for your limitation, right? So it's not about saying she should find accommodation at every job she's in because she's time blind. It's more like what job would work for people with time blindness? What, how can we reframe society to actually put people in positions where their jobs actually work with their uniqueness? Because that's what I think is missing from, I think, the conversation is we're always thinking, oh, these people just want handouts and they just want leniency and they just want this and that and I'm saying yeah yeah maybe we should just find jobs that kind of work and it doesn't matter that they have these particular uniquenesses okay let's go to the comments ah link says it's true not true on one hand the histories of timekeeping the history of timekeeping is out of sync with the natural humans but on the other hand the world is a construct and you do need to participate yes but if it is a construct then she is making the argument that we should change it which is within reason that's what I'm saying. Why are we getting mad at someone for getting upset that they want to change the construct when it's the construct to begin with? You can say no to the change, but we can also encourage her to find um, an area to change the construct. Look, I do it in my life every day. The world was not built for Britney. I don't feel at home anywhere in the world. I don't feel, you know, 100% myself anywhere except in the little bubble I created for myself. So I participate in the world. I pay my taxes like everyone else. I participate in the world. I show up on time, maybe 15 minutes early. I participate in the world, but I don't like it. And if it would change for me, that would be great. But, it, you know, we're in a community. So what I do is I move my individual ass closer and closer to the communities that work the best for me, right? And that are willing to change or shift or maybe they're already established, like established and great. And then in my own house, in my own world, I create the construct that works exactly for me and only for me. You know what I mean? My house is not here to accommodate anyone else but me, right? Maiden says she should find a job that will work with her issues and start her own or start her own business or become a sex worker. Yes. I don't think it'll be the best course of action to demand accommodations. Again, she wasn't demanding it. She was just asking if it was an option before she applied. And I think that's within reason. And I think her mom only yelled at her because her mom's a boomer and doesn't want to admit that some people do have uniqueness. She probably doesn't want to admit that her daughter's a little homeschooly you feel me um uh, yeet says not your fault but your responsibility sometimes it's your responsibility and you need to design your life around the fact that you can't do some jobs exact so true so true is it jickle says this is fuckery pure and simple but for the core question it's possible with some but not most jobs there can be roles that don't need a common a common Accountability, sorry, but I see that taken by AI anyway, but possible. Mm. What even would be the accommodations? I think the accommodations would be as simple as, like I said, you know, hey, 
a job that says you don't have to get it done nine to five. You can come in eight to four, make your own schedule or make it work for you or, you know, try to figure it out for yourself. I think jobs like I was really lucky that all the jobs I worked in had different shifts and I could figure out which shift worked for me the best. So I was the most functional during my shift. And I think that's important as well. Like if businesses actually put morning people on morning shifts and night owls on night owl shifts, the world would be a better place. But businesses out here putting night owls in morning shifts and morning shift people in night owl shifts. And I'm like, what are you doing? Literally find out what kind of a worker you have and put them in the best time slot possible for their fucking like natural clock. But that's not what happens. And I think that's really silly. But that's just my opinion. Actually, time is literally an illusion. Time exists in the physical world, not in the spiritual. It is not an illusion. Well, time is kind of an illusion, though. Like, we don't really understand it. And the time, the construct of time is literally a construct. Like, it's a, we made it up. Like, time isn't something that exists. The effects of what we perceive as time exists. Like, the effects of what we perceive as time exists. But literally, time itself isn't really technically in a, like, it's a construct. So it's kind of hard to understand, like, it is kind of hard to feel like we only have a clock because we made a clock, right? Like the sun is a good way to keep track of time. But like, what is time? And so, yeah, it's funny. I, I asked my employer once I was a nanny and I said, what if we had like a instead of a 24 o'clock, what if we had like a 36 or 48 or 52? And she was like, ah, they just make us work more. And I was like, oh, fuck. Good point. Like we thought it was like maybe if we had a certain way to like construct time we would be able to like be with our families more and not have to work all the time. But the truth is like, they'll just make you work more. That's all that it is. You know what I mean? So it's kind of interesting. Ah, Discord is talking about how um, Discord says, just catching up on the stream, but this is why working from home works for my partner and his ADHD. His company is international. So outside of a few core meetings, people work on their own schedule. Great example of getting around time blindness. Like great example is like find a company that lets you work your own hours or lets you work better hours or lets you work hours that work for you. Great example. Yeah. Britt says, yes, don't make disabled people suffer because of others taking advantage and making excuses. Yeah, I think the problem is like we're all, we're all going to make each other suffer whether we like it or not. And so it's like how do we mitigate suffering? How do we do harm reduction, right? Because what works for you doesn't work for somebody else. Like my mom thrives at 4, 35 a.m. Thrives. Like this woman is up, coffee in hand, goes to the office. She and my dad run a business. My mom is at work at like 5.30 a.m. Before any of the men get there, she has started her work day. And she's usually off between like 1 p.m. and like noon or like 2 p.m. And the men come into work like 7 or 8, right? But my mom is like there. She is ready to go. She is 100% hustling. If she expected my dad or the other men in the company to be there at her time, they would fail. They'd be out. They'd be tired. They'd be underslept. They all come in at a more reasonable time for themselves. But my mom, if she had to wait until she got to, she would be so frustrated. Like if my mom had to come in later, I think she would be so grumpy as a person. So the good news is that because they run their own business, she can run her own hours and she thrives the best at like five, five thirty in the morning, which is insane because like I'm not that person. I am my dad. I like I'm my dad. I like to sleep in a little bit. Five thirty girl. Mm -mm. No, no, no. Kay says the problem is that they wouldn't not that they'd make us work more. The problem is that people would would agree to work more and then they'd make it normal for everyone else and they will. And then they will all complain about the extra hours. You know, that's what happened in the 40 hour work week. It was like everyone was working 40 hours. And then I felt like a couple hustlers here were working more, 60, 100 hours. And then now in America, I swear in certain bubbles, it's become like an insult to work less than, you know, 50, 60 hours, which is interesting. I think even like I think even I've had that problem, to be honest with you. Like when I was really toxic -y in my like hustle culture bubble, I was like, yeah, if you're not working 60, 80 hours a week, like you're lazy. And now I'm like, girl, nah. And also, honestly, with the fibro and stuff and with my lack of spoons, I'm just so much more aware of like what is work. You know what I mean? When you have an issue, it's like what is work? You know what I mean? Topsy says you can't say time is an illusion when dropping your kid off late for school, though. Going to have to get past this problem eventually. Well, that's the problem. Yes, people can put up with things. But the question is, are we allowed to say it should stop? Look, guys, slavery never would have stopped unless somebody complained. Women's suffrage never would have been a thing unless somebody complained. The gays would not have been a thing unless somebody complained. So every time you hear someone complain, think 
okay, is this the next revolution, like revolutionary change in our social social structures? Just think to yourself, okay, is this the thing in 50 years we're going to be like, I can't believe we weren't doing that already, right? I get it. I totally get it. But like, think about it. Ingrid says, if I had to, bro, if I had to work 60 hours a week, I'd unalive myself. Yeah, but like, that's the reality though. If you're working to actually like buy a mortgage or have a mortgage in this economy, to have everything you need to like, to like function in society, you're probably working 40 to 60 hours a week. Maybe if you're lucky, it's paying the bills, depending on where you live. You know what I mean? Like depending on where you live, it just depends, you know? <clears throat> And if you're like me, you're going to work 40 hours a week in hopes to get paid. Like there's not even a paycheck that's guaranteed. And that's like the hard part too is that job works the best for my neurodivergency. So being a nanny was really great because I was without other adults for like 12 hours a day and the babies napped for half the day. So the reason I liked nannying for 12 hours a day was because the baby slept for half of them. The parents weren't at home so I didn't have to get nagged by adults and kids are funny. And all I had to do was food prep and hang out and clean the house. Easy. I could be a maid and a mom for money. Like, that was easy. But also stressful, you know, but also easy. But that works for me. Because, like, I don't like working with teams. I don't like working with other adults. They're annoying. Like, I don't like working with people. That's why I like doing YouTube. Because, like, I'm not reliant on working with people. If I show up to work, that's all that matters. It doesn't matter if my coworkers show up to work. You know what I mean? Discord says, do you have any thoughts on the, this girl broadly asking if they have accommodations for time blindness versus asking for specific accommodations for time blindness? It comes off like she asked for accommodations without giving examples of what could it possibly mean. Yes. Well, communication is everything. One time I had a friend who's an engineer. And she wasn't even close to having a baby yet. Not even in the sphere of being open to it, though she was like, you know, open to being a single mom, right? Open to it. During a job interview, and she was struggling to find work at this time because it was like pretty difficult in her field, her specific engineering field. She got this interview and they really liked her. And she was like, like they called her back, you know? And then she literally asked, um, what are your accommodations for um, maternity leave? And I was like, <gasps> why would you ask them that? Maternity leave is a huge red flag for companies. Like they don't want to hire women who want to get pregnant and then take nine months off or six months off or whatever it is. And she goes, well, I just want to know and I shouldn't be discriminated against because I want to take maternity leave. And I was like, for sure. But we don't live in a good world. We live in the patriarchy. So like they're going to fuck you over. And so it became like a thing. And honestly, like she never ended up having the baby. And it actually – didn't matter. They gave her a second, third interview and they said, like, we're happy to accommodate you because they ended up being a conservative business. Funny enough. But I think it didn't matter because she, when they asked her, like, are you planning to have the baby? She was like, oh, no, I'm not even married. I'm not even in that situation. And she never even had the baby. She's not even going to have the baby. Like, I think she, babies are off the, the table. But it is one of those things where initially I was like, don't ask that. You know what I mean? But it didn't end up mattering. So maybe it matters, maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe this girl asking wouldn't have mattered in another business. In my business, it wouldn't have mattered. If this girl asked me that, it wouldn't have mattered. But then you have to ask yourself, which game are you playing in which bubble? See, I would have told my friend not to mention pregnancy, but it didn't matter for her job. This girl is probably being told, don't ask this question. It's not going to get you a job. But in my business, if she asked me that question, I'd have been like, oh, cool, you know what time blindness is. Nice. Let's talk about it. What's yours look like? I would have been more than happy to deal with it, right? But that's the thing. It's like, eh, you know, parents are definitely the worst part of nannying. Apps are fucking lovely. Okay. Apparently Jessica's spinning. Let's see. Jessica says nothing other than a – oh, wait. Let me see if I can find the beginning. Uh. Ah. According to the theoretical physicist Carlo Ravelli, time is an illusion. Our naive perception as uh, of its flow doesn't correspond to physical reality. Nothing other than the consciousness observer, conscious observer registers the flow of time. It clock measures durations between events, much as measuring tape uh, measures distances between places. It is not the measure of the speed of which one moment succeeds, 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 succeeds another. Therefore, it appears of the, f it appears, oh my God, I can't read the small ass text, that the flow of time is subjective, not objective. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. 
Stowe is making a great point. Stowe says, wow, over 100 viewers and only three likes on the stream. Get it together, chat. Like the stream. Thank you, Stowe. Thank you, everyone. Please do it. Please. Please. I'd really like to have this job for the rest of my life. And I need your participation. Please subscribe. Please like the stream. Please. Thank you. Um, so, yeah. It's interesting. It is interesting. I, I can't hate this girl. You know what I mean? I just can't hate somebody who's dealing with something that I, again, interact with on my in my own personal life. Like, I'm really lucky that I've seen the people in my life with their uniqueness get, quote unquote, accommodations. And they're really great workers, so I'm not mad about it, you know? Yeet says, if I heard somebody say time blindness, I'd be worried less about the condition and more about the stereotypes around the person I might be hiring. Mm especially if they were younger than their mid 20s for sure. I think it's depending on your business. Look, can I be real with you? I'll say something a little controversial. If I was a business owner who had a business that wanted 100% efficiency with no breaks, I would never hire women who got pregnant. What's the point of hiring women who get pregnant? Like is there a point to that? Right? But I, being a community member person, wouldn't mind hiring someone who's pregnant and would have to go on maternity leave or paternity leave. Like if the husbands wanted to go on paternity leave, I'm about that. I'm about it, right? Or if the other wives or whoever, however your relationship works. But that's the thing, right? Depending on the focus of your business, why are we even hiring women? Why are we hiring women who get periods and become cranky for a week? Why are we even hiring anybody who's fat, too slow to walk, can't breathe, needs to pee. Why are we even hiring humans in the first place? If we want no accommodations for humans, things that are natural to a human, we should just hire robots. Why are we even hiring humans in the first place? Maiden Monster with a super chat, thank you so much. Um, or time blindness, girl could beg for money on the internet. <gasps> That's my job, Maiden. Don't you dare take it away from me. <laughs> I just think it's funny that we don't pretend like we already make accommodations for people. Oh, what about people who think they should get accommodations because they have kids? Gross. Maybe you shouldn't have had them. Gross. I can't believe people want accommodations for surgeries. Oh, you got your surgery? You had cancer? Oh, you need time off work? No. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm going to get clipped. Don't clip me. I'm just saying. I like how we pick and choose like what's good enough to get accommodations for. When I just think it'd be cool to have a society where we just, you know, actually had good people working for us so we could take their, like, issues seriously. I'm just saying we pick and choose. In my head, in real life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me Cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, da, 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 da,